I really look forward to what the future brings for the sword fishing. It's been less than 10 years where it's been, we've all been, got a taste of it. And each year, every season, somebody has a better idea. I enjoy it so much is because you never know uh, what you're gonna catch, what's gonna happen. And it's the biggest fish you can catch in the Keys. It's just a really, really, really cool fishery. And we're lucky to have it right in our back door. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. We mess around with swordfish a lot here lately. They, they've become quite popular, you know, with the, uh, with the ac access to catch them. It's our first sunset sword, baby. Look at that bill, man. He has been down there just tearing up the bottom. You know, I think the reason I enjoy it so much is because you never know uh, what you're going to catch, what's going to happen. You enjoy it so much because you're, you know, it's going to be the big one. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's you, the biggest fish you can catch in the Keys, really, yeah. except for shark. It's just a very uh, interesting fishery. It's not a lot known about it. There's a little bit, and everybody's got a theory. It's funny because even when you're with the experts, you know, so to speak, you pin them down and you realize uh, they don't even have all the answers. Um, it, it's just a really, really, really cool fishery. We're lucky to have it right in our back door between Key West, the Marathon, all the way to Miami, Lauderdale, uh, Palm Beach, uh, Gulf of Mexico. They're catching them in Maryland now. Well, that's what I'm saying. It seems like everybody, you know, South Carolina, uh, you know, anywhere up and down the East Coast. And uh, yeah, I know the West Coast guys are working on it. You know, I know they catch them up top sunning and they harpoon them, but it's a, it's a you know, young fishery and uh, for the daytime anyhow. Here in the Keys, we get them 12 months a year. Right. Because we have the, we don't have the winter weather which closes down the fishing. You know, the season's not over for us like in North Carolina, Maryland, New Jersey, and New York when it gets to winter time where the seas get really cold and uh, you just don't have, it's not safe to be out there. For us here in the Keys, it's 12 months and uh, you want to go out 30 miles and try to catch swordfish, you're going to catch one 12 months a year. You might not catch one every trip, but your, the availability for the Keys is there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, year round. And, and it's a big fish, like we were talking. So there's a little mystery in that. It could be a 30 pounder, it could be a 300 pounder. And every single one is delicious to eat. So they have tremendous value on the table as well as just a, a sport. Yeah, it's, um, you know, it's funny because a lot of guys I talk to and, and I tell them I'm going sword fishing and they're like, oh, sword wishing. Because a lot of guys is a love-hate deal because you spend sometimes hours and hours uh, just staring at a rod tip for the subtlest little bite. You know, you're speaking of an animal that's huge and very aggressive, uh, but you're fishing so deep, you know, 1,900 feet of water, right. 1,800 feet of water, the, 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 the transfer of that bite from the bottom to your rod tip is very subtle. Well, for us in the Keys, we're, we're dealing with two to four knots of current. So with that being said, we're dealing with six to 12 pounds of lead before you even put a bait on there. And then you had 2,000, 3,000 feet of line in the water with the Gulf Stream bowing it out. And whatever currents are below that, uh, you know, that rod is loaded up. And, and it's, it is, if you throw in a little two foot C or a three to five foot C, it's exhausting to watch that tip all day. But if you miss that one time where it's just, you know, after an hour, you got it, you know what's gonna happen as the boat moves, you just learn it. And, feel, and then when that one time, it goes down and it doesn't come up right. Doesn't come up right. Yeah. You gotta get on your game. It's time it's time to do something. All about the Cuda. Alright, you ready? We're going yeah, for Fire and hope. Simrads into the blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Shimano. Bubble Blade, the ultimate sportsman's knife. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Power Pro, Sea Deck, and Costa. Here we go. Iron the hole, buddy. In the northern Gulf, 
you know, the sword fishing is pretty popular there as well. These guys are a little quicker on on it than the guys on the East Coast further up, you know, not, and I say further up outside of Florida. Um, these guys in the Northern Gulf, they, you know, they have a lot less current to deal with. So basically what I saw uh, from our time fishing there was that the leader is the same, the bait is the same, the light placement is the same. The only thing different is a lot lighter lead. And uh, what that does is really shows you uh, the bite. Mm -hmm. And it's shallower water too. Crimps are done. Now I'm gonna floss these at a at 50 feet, we want to fish two poles. Well, then that's another amazing thing is how successful these guys are here in the Keys uh, fishing for these swordfish. Because from what I've read and seen and actually experienced, you know, whether it's in the Northern Gulf or uh, you know anywhere, a lot of guys aren't dealing with this current that we're dealing with down here. You know, no. we are in, you know in between, you know, I guess the Gulf of Mexico dumping in and then the Yucatan coming around Cuba and then everything pinching down. Into the Florida Straits. Into it's the Florida all Straits. coming together. It's all coming together. A lot of things coming together right there. And, and uh, it, it, there's a lot of current. It's a lot to deal with. Um, you know, there's a learning curve there. You're going to yeah, have to throw learn in a to wind drift, throw in some tide. Position the boat. You know, you hang up on the bottom, there's a chance that you're going to break not just your line off, but break your rod or break something, you know, mm -hmm. because, um, you know, people don't realize that I, I'm out there all the time and I'm, when I have a tourist on board or what have you, I'll, we'll be driving into the current, but yet we're still moving two knots backwards, you know, with the motors in gear. Yeah, and gear people, head I, I love telling them, which, like my kids are out there with me, I'm like, which way do you think we're going? They're like, what do you mean, Dad? Of course, we're going to the, to the west. I'm like, okay, well, look at this, you know, the numbers on the GPS, you know, that shows your location. I said, as a whole, yeah, we're pointing west and we're driving west, but we're actually moving. We're in a, it's a river. It's a, the Gulf Stream is a raging river right in the middle, yeah. the Florida Straits, and it, it drives it all. Yeah. And that's what I tell people a lot with the dolphin, you know, is everybody's like, oh, they're all swimming to the west. They're swimming to the west. Well, basically, they're just facing west, and they're not necessarily swimming west. The, the, as a whole, they're sliding east. They're going right by. But they're facing upstream because they're just trying to stay in our area a little longer to eat one more flying fish before they get swept out to sea. What the swordfish is doing, you know, I tell people all the time, if there was dollar bills floating down a river or a stream and you went out there and got in the water, the best thing you could do is just stand still and face upstream and pick up all the dollar bills, you know what I mean? Because, uh, and, and that's what I think the fish are doing with a flying fish. <laughs> they just facing upstream and, and picking up all the flyers. I'm going to floss a loop on here to clip the lead to. There is already a loop 150 feet from the hook, but we have two baits out 40 feet apart from each other. They tend to tangle. So we're gonna fish them a little shorter. We've had a lot of su great success before. That way we both can fish today. In Louisiana there, there's no current at all, so you can pretty much do whatever you want with four pounds of lead, but we're gonna have to be using six and eight, maybe 10 pounds of that. So we'll drop our lighter lead down first, get it scoped out, then ease down the second one, and they'll be separated by 100 yards. Now, I'm still all about fishing one with no tangles, but my partner Steve wants. <laughs> he'd, he'd rather risk a tangle and have two baits down in case one gets knocked off the hook. And uh, when we're fishing together, we've had really good luck doing it this way. So we're just going to get set up, small little alteration to our normal rig. And then we'll have. Charter boat captain for 25 years, Scott. You get good at taking those knots out, man. <laughs> You have the patience of Job when it comes to pulling tangles. I like to just buy more rigs. If you're not tangled, you're fishing. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how I feel. And so not getting tangled is a rig that you showed me. And that's where we take, what, our sinker is? Well, you had to move the sinker further away from the bait for starters. So they came up, you know, a nice formula is pretty much 150 feet. Uh, they can be longer or shorter. But if you want to get down every time, and nine times out of 10 without tangles, pretty darn good. Right. 
you um, get that long leader. It does two things. You don't have to leave the lead on the bottom anymore with the breakaway, which is never a good practice. And it's really tough making concrete or rebar. You can do all those things, but they just aren't streamlined enough as a clean uh, eight pound lead stick. No, I like the lead stick. They fit in the rod holder. Mm -hmm. um, but, but again, Hey, there. I don't know if you, you know, obviously you've seen the price of lead these days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pricey. Yeah. So getting rebar cut is is definitely affordable, and making concrete little yeah, buckets yeah. are affordable as well. For me personally, it's not streamlined like the sticks, and I like a nice and clean presentation. And 150 feet, usually the fish still hasn't uh, made his move to the surface. You can get that thing unclipped, and then when the jump sequences start, you actually have the lead taken off. Yeah, a lot of times, or not all the times, they'll start jumping before you get the lead off, but not every time. Hey, you want to see more of Into the Blue? Well, you can. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even come on over to our YouTube channel. See you there. The depth has always been an issue. What do you do at 2,000 feet when you get a bite and your bait's gone? And we started with the, the, the squid. And squid are soft, and they could slash them. And then you're you know, 15 minutes down, 30 minutes, you get a slash, like, oh, is my bait there? Then it's 15 minutes up, an hour's gone by, and your your bait is wrecked. Right. So what do we have? We have blackfin tunas, we have anita, we have a lot of dolphins. So somebody started taking parts of those fish in Barracuda and making tougher strip baits. Taking a schoolie dolphin and cut his belly out real tight along the tail. So we got a perfect double strip. Now we're just going to put the hook in it and have it ready to go. 300 pound leader, 10 0 hook. That's your choice of hook. This is an owner Jobu. So want to line it up, poke a hole through, and then bring the hook through the hole we just poked. All right. Now before we start sewing everything together, just want to stitch the hook in place. So I'm just gonna do a couple, a couple stitches right around the hook, just to keep it from turning. Most important thing about sword fishing is not to have a spinning bait. You want to leave your bait down there 45 minutes to an hour, and if it's spinning and tangling, you just wasted an hour of your life. So I'm just going to do a couple stitches to hold this hook in place before we put the whole thing together. One, one high and one low. Before I sew this together, I'm actually going to put a little piece of dolphin row in the body cavity. Just a little extra scent. Is this the the egg sac from the actual dolphin that we caught. We're just gonna put it right back in there. Just think when the swordfish bites it, those little eggs distribute throughout the water, I think it just drives them crazy. So I could be wrong, but it just works for me. So that instantly became the bait of choice for here, us here in the Keys, because you could throw a rubber skirt over it, sew it on tight, and you know, we've we've taken a live fish right out of the water, made a bait for you before, and and those are the ones. You know, you, you get bit, 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 oh, he's not on. You don't have to wind up. Mm -hmm. You can drift to the next area where you might get a bite, and you you know with reasonable uh, you know confidence you can go an hour. You don't if you don't have a tangle, you're not having to wind up every time you get a bump, and that that changed everything. That just gave us more soak time. And when your bait's on the bottom, that's where the swordfish are, and that's when you can get your fish. Now to finish it off, you just want to put some eyeballs on there, take a rubber skirt. Just need something just to. Keep this operation clean. Again, it's just so you keep your bait from spinning. So we're gonna get this little head on here, like that. And then snatch that on. It says a bloop. Now to keep that from coming off, I'm gonna take this last little piece. I'm gonna go through one time, right through the bait and the rubber squid. And just do a half hitch on that. Now he can't snatch that off either. So the whole package is ready to go. All right, trim that knot. Five minutes, there's a swordfish bait for you. And we never gave up on squid. The, the more durable baits just give you more confidence. But on the same day, if you're catching a lot of squid, and squid will destroy, I mean, a swordfish might not be able to knock my bonita strip off the hook, but a pack of squids can eat the whole thing except for the skin and the hook and leave you this little wind sock. <laughs> God, he got me a squid. Watch come, baby. Well, one almost bit so, me, so I know they're aggressive. Oh, there it is. <laughs> That's how you know you're in the right spot. He's gonna get you. Look at that squid, Bo. Holy moly. I wanna see the sea. Ooh. <laughs> he's gonna bite you. He's still alive. I wanna see the rig now. Drop him back down. 
All right. We'll rig him up. Look at that pretty thing. We can put him right back down. That's how you know you're in the right spot when you're catching squid and you're sword fishing, man, because that's go. their favorite thing to eat. You can just take that fresh caught squid, put a pretty hook in there, and sew them on there just a little bit more than just putting a hook in it. But I like to stitch mine like I was trolling the bait for a blue marlin. So I'm going to put a few more stitches in the head and get that mantle in there good and tight. I don't look, I'm not a firm believer that the hook has to be all the way in the back of the squid because I think no matter what, he can pull the whole thing down and give you this big old softball and hook. I like to have the hook at the top, and I just don't want him to cut my body in half. Attaching the body and the head to the hook so if he slashes it, he can't just um, tear it in half without coming back to fuck myself. Having to come back with something all in a knot. He can hit this really, really hard and it's gonna hold together. It's a little more sewing than you need to do, but this, these baits are soft and they're so far down, I like to have a second chance. By holding the stitches to the body and then attaching them to the base of the hook, he can hit, he can slash this and it won't come apart. So I've got the hook here attached to the mantle tight, finished with 10 half hitches up here so it can't slide down. Got the head attached to the mantle so it can't come off on his bite. And I've got the actual whole section of the squid attached, a couple half hitches to the hook. So if he slashes on that, he might tear it, but it's gonna stay in the shape of a squid long enough for him to come back again. Found himself in the wrong spot. He was in between the fish and he had the boat here. Sim Rads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, has been brought to you in part by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. West Marine, for your life on the water. Scales, every degree of water. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And by Ameritrail and Spear One Charters. You know, a big part of our show and, and, and what I enjoy the most about our show um, is, is not the company of you, but at the same time, that was a compliment. It was hidden. It was subtle. Did you did you feel it? I think it hurt. It hurt. I'm not sure if that was a comment. All right, <laughs> I tried. But um, a, a big part is that the underwater part. You know, uh, I, it is, I, I, it I, is I, what into, makes into the blue. Right. From the moment we started this show, it was it was number one to me, and it was the most important thing because I, I as a kid growing up, I could sit and watch like Mutual of Omaha, and this guy talk. There was no people in the shot, and it was on for an hour. And it was animals doing all kinds of things, just in their natural uh, situation. So I, I really wanted that part to be be a, a heavy load on Into the Blue. And so through us, you know, working out, uh, diving, um, you know, a lifetime of diving, I, I got one of my best friends to, to come on board, and he's our underwater camera guy. Uh, he ain't, he's not scared of anything. I, I, I laugh at how many times a new cameraman will come along, and they'll look at Jake and be like, "That guy's crazy." Growing up in the Florida Keys, you know, we're just uh, catching lobster, spearing fish, and so I've been on the water my whole life, and I um, feel pretty comfortable in the water. Oh, boy. Was in the water with a, uh, with a swordfish and uh, got in a bad spot and got between the fish and uh, in the boat, and he, he, he saw me as a threat, and he was trying to defend himself, and, and he almost got me. But, uh, you know, he hit the camera, broke his bill off in it, and uh, swam away. And, and that was the end of that. It happened real fast. It probably happened within less than a second. He found himself in the wrong spot. He was in between the fish, so you had the fish out here, you had the boat here. He got in between the two. And what that allowed is that allowed that fish to come back. You know, whereas if he was on the outside, which we've, happened, we've had in the past, where I had a swordfish and it, he was on the outside and the swordfish tried to make a move at him and all I did was just thumb, yeah. thumb it and, 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 and put the, pull the reins back and the swordfish you know, couldn't get to him and, uh, and so he got the great shot and what have you. What happened this time is he got in between us and the boat. You can't put the pressure on anymore. Now the fish is free and that fish actually made him a, a, a move on him. Um, you know, a, a swordfish is a very you know, strange animal like we said before. 
And but what we, one thing we do know about them is they're very aggressive. If you look at other swordfish, they are beat up. They got stab marks in them. I think they spend their life either fighting over positions for breeding, uh, fighting over food, or fighting off mako sharks. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mako shark is one of the baddest sharks out there. And I believe, and I, I could be wrong, but I'm gonna guess that over 50% of his diet is swordfish. Yeah. Because it's a fatty, huge meal. And those sharks don't like to jeopardize their eyes, or jeopardize their gills. Um, they're gonna make a move on something that's gonna be very, uh, productive to them and killing a 200 pound fish is very smart for for a mako because if he takes that in he's probably good for a week or so you know what i mean and uh, well i've seen it i've seen how they do it they cut the tail off and then when it bleeds out they bite the bill off and then the, the carcass will float to the surface and they'll eat it around that gut sack until their last meal will be the gut sack and but they can follow it for weeks and, and you know, you, I've even heard stories of people catching sharks with, with, with sword bills uh, broken off in their- Mako sharks. Yeah, yes. in their bodies. So the swordfish is very scrappy, different type of animal. Um, it, it's really strange, it's, it's, really, it's a fighter. So uh, I, I definitely, I'm glad it all worked out well. Well, but, they, they attacked boats. Yeah. Uh, and Jake was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time, took a glance and blow from the bill and it yeah. got stuck in his scooter, thank goodness. Yeah. It makes for a great well, he story had, now. He had the camera, uh, you know, we have our cameras mounted to a scooter and he had that as a shield, uh, which he was able to get in between him and the sword. But let me tell you something else, it really scare you, is that sword might have thought the scooter was the the head, or you know what I'm saying? Or that, that was what you had to cut off, you know? Like, that, that was the head of the snake, you know? Yeah. And and and, and so. It, maybe it did hit what it was at. And, and listen, with an eyeball that big, believe me, he, he knows where he's going and what he's doing. But nonetheless, Jake's still with us. <laughs> and we look we look forward to many 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 more years of great underwater footage. So thank you, Jake Perry. You got to be on your toes. E even if you're on your toes, even if you think you're an animal expert, uh, you are until you're not. I was I was in some real estate you do not want to occupy. You know, between the fish and the boat on a swordfish, no, don't go there. <laughs>